Hello, it's me, it's Ricky. Welcome back for another tornado reaction. We're going to go to Henryville. Uh, this happened on uh, Friday, March 2nd, uh, 2012, uh, in Henryville, Indiana, and surrounding areas. As usual, I don't know nothing of what happened. Uh, I don't know the magnitude of the devastation. Uh, it always makes me nervous before watching these because I, uh, I really hate seeing. Uh, good people getting hurt. I don't like that. If you do enjoy this, smack a like and of course hit that subscribe. I would appreciate that a lot. And a big thank you to my uh, channel members and my patrons. Thank you so much for the amazing support. It means everything. And a big shout out to the supreme tier donators over by Patreon and of course on channel membership YouTube. Thank you. Cats are destroying the apartment as possible. Usual. Yeah. Let's do this. People in Henryville, make your plans now. You have only minutes to find your tornado safe place. Get there and let this storm pass over you. So we can't stress enough that this is just the beginning of what's to come. There it is. Over the hill. Once I seen it in person, go on, go, get out, get out. I was terrified for my life. Go, 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 go. Yeah, tornado going so close to that house. I knew this tornado was going to kill people. I pray we would be spared. Oh, look at it, picking stuff up. It's like it was just looking at us. It's picking up and decided to turn. It's coming here. The hail felt like it was forever. Back up, back up. I remember being afraid that this might be it. Look at that debris. Oh my God! Everybody, the tornado on the back. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know what happened, but I already feel uh, this is going to be a rough one. This is crazy. I have never seen one. I finally get to see one. Maybe the last one I see. <laughs> sure. On March 2nd, 2012, it was basically a typical day. Didn't think much about the weather that day. Didn't seem any different than any other day. It was just an ordinary day. The weather, as I recall, was pretty fair. It didn't look like a storm of any kind, but I was listening to the radio and they were warning us that storms were coming. So it was very important that we be aware of what goes on. A tornado warning just about to come out for Du Bois County. You can see we're under the high risk of severe weather, cloudy downtown with a few peaks of sun. Our focus is back out to the west of us. I'm the Wave 3 News Chief Meteorologist. And just after noon, we started to see those storms about 120 miles to our west. So once we went on the air, we never went off because of the ominous nature of that storm. And we were well aware that the Weather Channel was going to be somewhere around the region. Hey guys, our satellite dish is down. Crew is under cover and getting there at the moment. You can see why. Um you can actually see the buildup. And uh, this is something we don't have in Sweden. Of course, we have uh, severe weather in our, in our way. Thunderstorms mostly. But it's kind of rare especially in South Sweden. Conditions uh, coming our way here in Louisville, Kentucky. We knew there would be thunderstorms that would develop off to our west and they would propagate over us and then we would be able to move on from there. So it was a really good position to start in Louisville. I came home around noon and my husband was watching the news. This is not something to drive into as it oh, crosses oh over my. Clark County and eventually. We were hearing that there could be tornadoes and that it was going to get bad. Wayne was very, very concerned about it. I told him, oh, they always have that. Don't worry about it. And so we started watching for it. Do you think one of the reasons 
uh, that people underestimate it, or is it just nothing bad can happen to me because that is something I think a lot of people have that sense of feeling, but like nothing can happen to me. I'm not gonna die. I don't know if the same thing for you guys. Probably is. Let me know. Like we that. had all the children scheduled to be in the gymnasium uh, shortly after the start of the day to have a play. But we kind of kept an eye on the weather throughout the day. About 2.25, I received a phone call warning us that storms were coming in our direction. Those started the wheels turning of what we do next. Uh, do we evacuate? Do we get all the kids in the safe areas that we could get to? Troy and I talked to each other and we said, let's go, let's send them home. They actually came over the intercom and said we were gonna dismiss the kids now. And at that point I was kind of like, what is going on? But once we had the kids loaded, the tornado sirens actually went off in town. Uh oh. My two daughters were in school that day. And when they came in my room, they were like, Dad, what do you want us to do? And I said, just go away from here as far as you can. Just, you know, head away from the storm. You need to find your tornado safe place. Reports of funnel clouds have been coming out along I-64. This is a high risk day. First high risk of uh, 2012. So we should be uh, closing in on it shortly. We're both from Michigan, but we came to southern Indiana because we saw an exceptional setup for chasing storms. We should be seeing something over there pretty soon, a wall cloud and who knows what else. As we approached Louisville, wall we turned cloud. north on 130. <clears throat> Did it say wall cloud? Five, and we saw the funnel for the first time. Oh, oh yeah, right there. Yep. So there's a funnel. Yeah. There's a tornado right. right there, Bill. See it? Oh, yeah. See it? Yep. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a tornado. Yep. Jeez. Now, look at that. As soon as we saw that funnel, I knew this tornado had potential to kill people because it was going to be big, violent, and it was going to have a fairly long track. We have a tornado on the ground. It's moving northeast at what speed, Andy? Uh, looks like 55 miles per hour is what they're reporting on these, on the movement. We had the news people waiting to respond to anything that may have happened, and we had our weather team devoted to getting real-time information out. Put as many walls as you possibly can in between you and the outside environment. A lot of I was the morning meteorologist, but my grandparents lived a little north of Henryville. I was tracking these storms, I was keeping everybody safe, but in the back of my mind I thought, I want to make sure my Mimi and Pop-Up are okay. Fire department. I work on the ambulance here in Clark County. Yeah, I was off work that day. Of course, I'd heard the reports of the tornado coming in, and when I found out that there's one that actually touched down, I thought, well, it might be, might actually be serious. So I went to the firehouse to help. It's a strong tornado, looks like. Form fast. There it goes. Tornado. I fear that this uh, would be a total destruction. Total devastation. In front of us. There it goes. Yep. This tornado was a race car. It was a rocket ship. This was one of the fastest ones I've ever seen. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Holy smokes. Fast. That's how fast that thing. Yeah. Big tornado. Strong tornado. This is forested territory. The road winds. It's hilly. And just the drama of how that tornado evolved and changed shape made it visually very unique. Wow. Look at that sucker. Okay. Oh, you can't grasp it. I can understand that this is a phenomenon, phenomenon produced by nature. Look at it. How is that even possible? There is definitely scientific uh, explanation to how and why. But look at it. It doesn't make any sense. Earth is a messed up place. So close to that house. Oh, smokes. It's frightening. It's a helpless feeling because once another agent decides, look at that. This is where this tornado is oh. going. There is nothing you can do yeah, but no. be a spectator. Yep. We are close. Three. That thing is going so fast. I look at it. Look we at can it. See look. it getting bigger and bigger and wider and wider. And by the time it crossed the road in front of us, we could tell that it was going to do serious damage. Look at that thing go. Wow. Just it's already over this road. Yep. 
Whenever a tornado intensifies that quickly, you know you've got a serious situation on your hand. Some people may not be alive in 20 minutes. I just spoke to someone on the phone. They're in their basement. They have lost power, and it sounds like a train is on top of their house. Their house is shaking. I was watching the news and clouds just started getting really dark and my parents was like, oh, uh, go outside and just start, you know, checking out this, the storm. Here comes the wind. I can hear it coming. This looks bad right there. Bad. This is what we're talking about. Before everybody get out, go home. This is it. I just really still didn't believe that it was actually coming over the hill. And it's terrifying that, you know, you can't see it and you don't even know it's really even coming. This is it right here coming over the hill. Oh, we're right here. Walk over here. Do we need to get a jump in the car? I was perfectly fine until I seen it come over the hill. That's when I really panicked. Oh, God. Get back. Get in there. Get over the hill. My mom is yelling, my dad's yelling, and I just really oh my. think straight at all. Oh, Look at it. I didn't really know what was going to happen once I seen it in person live. But technically, the speed of a tornado is way more than a, than a car. So technically, they could be chased down by the tornado and sucked up. That's when I knew I was looking at death. I like the sound of this. I just spoke to someone on the phone. They're in their basement. It sounds like a train is on top of their house. Their house is shaking. I don't have no uh, basement or storm shelter or nothing. My mom was trying to actually hide underneath the foundation of the home, and once I seen the tornado, I just grabbed her from underneath and, and just hopped in the car. Come on, get out, get out, get out, get out! Get out, First thing gotta I go. was thinking was just get my parents and uh, get out of there. Back up, back up, back up. Hey, calm it. I was definitely terrified for my life. Oh, they're really building this one up. I, I can see the, the, the tornado getting bigger. It's uh, it's amazing to see and um how it actually start like pointing down a bit like this and then it got now we got the, the funnel going and then it, then that that goes up and comes down even bigger and I can see the building up and it's terrifying. Man, it's tearing up those trees. Once it got by us, we knew our chase was done because there was no way we were going to keep up with this tornado. Damn it, right here. And we knew we couldn't go any farther because we were blocked off by debris. Look at this deep debris right here. Oh, yeah. It crossed yeah. right here. It sure did. Yeah. Oh. At that point, I filed a, a spotter network report just to make sure that uh, we had also added to the warnings that were going out. Well, power lines down right there. House? House okay? Looks like it. Looks okay. Came right Some ring shingles ripped off. We can't go any farther. No. That's it. Oh my God. Look, look at those that. feelings of knowing people are in its path, knowing the potential loss of life hit you even then. This is a wicked tornado on the ground taking you over into Clark County. Actually got everyone back into three little office areas and about 35 people in probably 300 square feet. For some reason, I felt like I had to be where the principal was, almost like a kid. And I had a friend on each side of me and I started praying. This storm now is going to take us very close to the Clark State Forest in Henryville. Yeah. Okay. I am a 
a visual marketer. Then I lived right across the street from the state forest. And I had some friends over that day. They were spending the night. So it was it was a little hectic. At first I thought that was thunder, but then it was like, no, that's not going away. That's just We were out the back door trying to get a glimpse Boy. of the tornado. Heard the tornado noise probably five minutes before it actually hit, and that noise just got louder. I thought at the moment I was going to lose it all. This is crazy. Oh, man, that's a big thing. That looks really a, big. Look at that. We saw it come over the horizon. I was very excited seeing it. They really show so much strength. Coming right toward Henry Bell. I know, it's not moved. It's coming here. I'm hoping it's it goes picking up. It's picking stuff up. Look, you can see a rotate. I'm hoping it goes to the north of us. It looks like it's hit right toward us. We just kept watching it. Wayne was very concerned about it. I still wasn't that much. I just didn't think it was going to hit us. Yep. Yep. Hey. While I was at the firehouse, I actually saw the tornado crossing the interstate. Hey, that's the first time I've ever seen that is, that is getting closer. And it was going parallel to the station. And we didn't know if it was going to turn back towards us or what it was going to do. And then it ended up coming into town, heading towards the school. And that was where my uh, nephews both were. People in Henryville, make your plans now. You have only minutes to find your tornado safe place. You look up in the sky, and there's this monster wedge tornado, almost a half mile to a mile wide, traveling on the ground toward Henryville. On March 2nd, usually people are thinking about snow, not violent tornadoes. This tornado came at a horrible time. School was letting out, people were coming home, and turning on the television, seeing that it's heading right for your kid's school, I couldn't help but think what those parents must have been going through. As I looked out front, I hollered, hey, there's a school bus of kids just pulled up. Everybody stay together. All our group together. Right now. Go, 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 go
approximately 315, the tornado hit. And when it hits, you feel the vibration and the shake. It was like an earthquake and a tornado together. The whole building just shook. There was devastation all around me. Things in the hallways torn out, doors blowing open. The gymnasium, which was just probably 50 yards from me, the roof fell in. Oh. What seemed like an eternity was actually about one minute of total destruction. That was basically the school building literally being ripped from around us and taken away to who knows where. It was very scary. And as things were falling in and crashing around me, I wasn't for sure what the outcome was. It's a huge one. It's coming here. It's picking up. Oh, look at it picking stuff up. Well, we need to close this window. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to close the window. Okay. They kept saying on the TV it was going to go northwest, northwest. And when it got right on the other side of a field in front of our home, it's like it stalled, like it was just looking at us and decided to turn. And then it came straight towards us. Oh, see, look at that debris. Going up in the air. Uh-huh. It's going to hit us directly. Listen to it. I know. Wayne said, I love you, and I told him I loved him, and gave each other a kiss, and we were hugging each other. And then all of a sudden, uh, we both at the same time said, my ears are popping. I, I couldn't even imagine that. The ears popping, too, because of the pressure getting so... I don't know, it's low or high. I think it's going to be low. Let me know if I'm completely wrong with that. And of course, if you're still here, if you're a channel member, of course, you can use the emod still here. If you're not a new channel member, you can write still here. Let me know you're still watching. We started getting dispatched out. I went ahead and jumped on one of the brush trucks with Monroe Fire and rode out with them. Somebody had called in that there was somebody on the side of the interstate. We didn't know what kind of injuries or anything it was. We could see some of the damage from the school. That was where my nephews both were. It was almost like I couldn't process it all. Me and my dad and my brother went out and headed down the road to see who we could help. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, Dad, look at my We've got people uh, trying to get out of here. But as we drove down, we started to see things like sheet metal, debris. There were different road signs bent heavily uh, in the direction that the tornado had moved. There was a, some commercial trucks in a parking lot, and all of those were knocked over. Oh, wow. A school bus. We got to the end of the road, and it was almost unrecognizable. Uh, not a lot of depth. And from the view we had, you can only see a portion of the uh, of the school, and it looked like the, it was completely uh, completely leveled. The boys and I are sitting here in what used to be downtown Henryville. It's gone. I'm looking at the school, and it is rubble. My dad got to call the room, and... They were saying, you guys are okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're okay. We're in town right now. And she said, do you know that there's another tornado coming? What? And we're like, no. Let me take you back to the second storm that we're watching. That one's moving across southern portions of Du Bois County. Folks, think the storm is past. Trees are down. Power lines are down. And then all of a sudden, another storm swings in on the backside that's large enough to kill you. We got a, a funnel cloud developing now. This is the second supercell. The sirens are wiped out. You can't hear anything. You don't even know it's coming. The communication's gone. You're wondering what the heck just happened to you. And here comes this second tornado, literally within 15 minutes. The day is not done. We still have a lot more storms that are still life-threatening. So we can't stress enough that this is just the beginning of what's to come. No. So we got a second one coming. The day is not done. We still have a lot more storms that are still life-threatening. So we can't stress enough that this is just the beginning of what's to come.
once things kind of quieten it down, uh, I stand up, I kind of look around, make sure everything's okay, and then I slowly move down the hallway, and once I figure out that things are kind of over, then I take off running up front to try to get up with everybody else and not be down there by myself. In the room, all the power was out, but there was some light. And everyone in the room was covered with a white dust. It was very surreal. The majority of the ceiling tiles had either fallen or been taken up. And then looking over, two students had bloody noses. So, you know, I was asking everybody in the room, are you okay, check here, and then went to the other two rooms to check on everyone else in the office area. And one of the teachers went to the end of the office area and looked out the door and he shut the door and he said, it's bad. That was probably the most afraid I was because I thought we were stuck. My assistant principal and I went out and gathered about six more staff members that were safely in rooms underneath desks. We stayed in the office area um, as we didn't know what was going to happen. I saw light. So I headed toward the light, and it was our cafeteria. As I start back across the cafeteria, the siren went off again. One of the custodians and myself were trying to shut water valves off, and we're coming out of one of the mechanic rooms, and I said, Paul, we got to go. There's no one coming. He said, are you sure? And I said, yes, I'm sure. It was a little unsettling, because I thought, oh, this is over, and it wasn't over. Well, let's hope this is a small one. Still deadly, but small. It took us a few minutes to weave in and out of everything and get up there. got out and saw her laying there and she was laying on her back on the side. She'd been pulled out of her car. She'd been thrown by the tornado. I'm honestly fearing the worst. But before we can even get a full assessment and get her onto the backboard, we start getting hit by the hail. Oh, I didn't know what we'd be able to do. Word saying there's numerous rescue crews being dispatched to the Henryville area. And we understand that uh, Henryville is taking a second hit. You know, we had one tornado come, on. come through. You get a calm for a second, you think you're okay, and then another supercell follows it. And just in a matter of moments, they started to deal with gigantic hail. That in itself is rare, but from a human standpoint, that's terrifying to know my family just survived the first one. Now we have to do it all over again. We immediately tried to make our way back home because, you know, looking around, there really wasn't a place for us to safely avoid the storm. Good grief. Oh, but the hail was starting to fall. And after a few seconds, when I realized, oh, we're in the tornado, I was afraid for my life. One hit the windshield and it cracked. A couple of seconds later, it was just raining hail. Oh my! I gotta be some big hail, like golf balls or. So it was almost impossible to see out of the front windshield. That's incredible. I remember being afraid that this might be it. felt like it was forever and they were bigger than softballs and we just kept right on working trying to roll her onto the backboard did he say softballs i don't know what that is let's see if we can go back ever so slightly the 
trail, it felt like it was forever. And they were bigger than softballs. And we just kept right on working, trying to roll her onto the backboard. When the hail is. got to the point that it was hurting, the other firefighter, she found a door for a semi-trailer, and we all held it up. And Erica could have stayed in the truck for protection, but she came straight back to help us. And that was... Oh, look at the size. That's gonna hurt. I'm worried about my two nephews in school and really just the whole town. I knew that we needed to focus on her and what she needed as opposed to thinking about everything else. I'm getting a lot of reports trying to confirm the K through 12 school in Henryville. Apparently there's students in the school. I'm trying to confirm that. So Imagine sitting at home as a parent and having someone tell you your children stuck inside of a school and there's a tornado heading right for them. That's something as a meteorologist and as a journalist, you better believe we have to confirm that before releasing that information. And we needed someone to figure out right then and there if there were children still stuck inside that school. The second wave hit and took out the entire front of the building and pretty much everything right up into where we were at. There was one wall between us and the debris. I was in the restroom when the giant hail and the second tornado came through. And it just seemed like, is this really happening? The second tornado tore the second gymnasium roof off and the wall off. And uh, both sides of where we were was Getting the gym floor and she in contact with the elementary, making sure that everybody was safe on their side. And I remember calling Troy and I said, you guys all right? He said, yeah, yeah, I think so. And, you know, I said, well, I smell gas. I said, we got to get out of here. Okay. The tornado hit our house, but it wasn't bad. We had a lot of damage but nothing compared to other people's where their house got leveled. I mean, my house was fine. The second it passed, a buddy of mine told him, I said, Mike, come on, we gotta go help people. And then when I started running down the road and kept hearing something, it almost sounded like a baby crying or like a cat meowing or something like that. So I ran to my neighbor's house and looked to my left and seen uh, Lenora. And all you could see was her head sticking out from underneath the debris. So we go over and we get the wall shoved off of her. And she's sitting there and blood just streaming all down her face. And I was like, we got to get her to the house. She, you know, she's going to die. But then she asked me, she's like, where's my husband? Where's Wayne? So we start looking and I see two feet sticking out from underneath the refrigerator. All I could think was, I can't believe this. I've got the hard part now. Lenora, she asked me, where's my husband, where's Wayne? So we start looking and I see two feet sticking out from underneath the refrigerator. Since my husband wasn't yelling for me or anything, I just kind of knew he wasn't around and they found him oh probably five foot from me and my life was shattered and that was the worst she's crying and blood just streaming all down her face and, and i just kept telling my buddy mike she's gonna die she's gonna bleed to death so we got her put up in the truck and got her into the ambulance and if it wasn't for that i don't know if i would have made it or not I always consider that those two saved my life. I mean, I was just doing what I think any good neighbor would do. Good human. Good human. At that point, 
point, I think I was going on adrenaline because I was afraid another one was going to come because the siren went off again. Most of us were carrying children at that point through what looked like a war zone. There were cars, pieces of metal out to the highway, and then when we went down to the community center, it was still intact. We had several kids still in the school when the tornado hit, so we knew that we had a lot of parents really concerned for their kids. Devastation. Uh, all right, we've got one fatality so far. Unfortunately, but there was no way to get any information out to anybody. I couldn't call my daughters or any of my family. The tornado actually knocked out one of the cell towers. So I think everybody was kind of numb and, and didn't know what to do at that point. We put the kids in the basement because we heard that there might be another tornado coming our direction. Third one? Nope. Finally, the hail let up, and as soon as it did, we got her on the backboard, and we slid her into the back seat, and I jumped into the back. Her eyes and her face were covered with broken glass and debris, and she wanted to know if I could brush it out of her eyes, and there was so much I was scared that if I did, I would hurt her. So I told her just keep her eyes closed, and I was going to stay right with her until we get to the firehouse. We arrived back, and there was a triage, so we dropped the patient off. We were only there a few minutes, and I found out that there had been one casualty, and uh, that was Wayne Hunter. Uh, he worked at a hospital as an RN for a long time. He was an awesome guy. Works with us. There's an ambulance, and uh, they were going out to get Wayne, so I rode out with them. What told me this was an awful situation was the look on people's faces. I mean, they were literally walking out of town like they were zombies. They did not know what hit them here. Their house is blown away. They've got a few blankets, a few pictures, but the look on their face, I'll never forget. It was just like, what just happened to me? We've got emergency vehicles that are trying to get to people that have been injured. There was a huge factory building destroyed. Asphalt ripped up from the road. But the closer we got to the Henryville Middle and High School, the worse the damage got. Look like, at the school bus the there on that picture. I mean, this is just oh. a horrific scene coming out of Henryville, Indiana. Um, uh, I can even imagine that this just the tours just grabbed this like it's nothing. I mean, picking up asphalt like it was nothing. I'm kind of speechless on what to even say that, uh, that you know, the... Um, <laughs> That's unbelievable when you look at what's standing and what's not just yeah. around there. That that town has been hit very hard. Once uh, the tornado got away and got out of my sight, I got a lot of relief. You know, I was safe and I was okay. My home, you know, was fine, but there was another house that was in the path of it. It just leveled it out. There was nothing there. And there was actually a family inside of that home thinking that they were okay and it just took them right out. I think they found their bodies about a quarter of a mile away. Complete destruction across portions of Clark County. Look at the damage that has been caused across our area. It's no wonder that we've had not only injuries but fatalities. The only safe place to be with a monster storm like this would have been underground. By the time we reached the house, the hail had stopped, and we were uh, pr pretty much unharmed. But there were people out in the street, the fragments of buildings, there were people inside you know, looking around. And I can remember a couple people, um, they were inside the house, and the house just, I mean, it was just a frame standing there. And just seeing the expressions they had on their faces, it was a very sad thing. Okay, if you're still here... Just write in the comment section, still here, Recky. Uh, let's continue to see the complete destruction at Henryville. Once the storm had passed and the threat of severe weather had ended, I went to Henryville. It was completely dark. There was no power. There were trees down. There were people in the street. 
And there are chainsaws that are going because people are trying to uh, free up their cars. It was a very chaotic scene. Like a war when scene. I reported in front of the high school. It is a sad scene that's unfolding here in Clark County. Over my shoulder, you see the high school, the uh, middle school not far behind. Literally a destructive sight. To stand in front of this demolished <laughs> school, knowing that kids might still be inside. That made it hard to go on. The work continues tonight. Search and rescue crews will make sure that the uh, folks that have not been accounted for are as the night goes on and into the day tomorrow. You can imagine that difficult task. The work continues tonight. Search and rescue crews will make sure that the uh, folks that have not been accounted for are. And just within minutes, the students were released from that building as it collapsed earlier today with that massive tornado right here in Henryville. Please. Please. Everybody was fine in that school and nobody was injured at all, which is just, just amazing when you think about it. They knew exactly what to do, they knew exactly where to go. I waited until the very last student was connected with that parent and watching the parents become relieved knowing that their kids were safe and just just seeing that joy, that hug, that, um, that they had survived, that was real important to me. Job. My daughters made it to town just north of Henryville. They made it back, and at that point, we were able to unite and hug, and they knew I was okay, and I knew they were okay. I guess that's when it really hit you. How fortunate you are that you made it through something like that, and that you can hug your family and see them again. light here in Henryville in Indiana and you can see uh, folks combing through what's left of their homes. I mean just complete and utter destruction in through here. It's definitely one of the worst storms I've ever seen and it's the closest I've been to the storm damage shortly after the tornado occurred. You can tell that something really bad went through there. I mean, it, there's nothing standing for as far as the eye can see. Oh, look at the trees. My grandparents were okay. Big tree just cut off like a Toothpick. But some of the neighborhoods are right off the main road in Henryville. They were demolished. And the diner that was a focal point in Henryville, one of the school buses went right through it. It was just unexplainable. Look at that. My son took my wife and I up in a small plane to fly the path of the tornado. That was another whole shock to see what took place that we were in. And the devastation just catastrophic. The most vivid memory was going back to the area where we were at. I even sat in the chair that I was in that day before just because I wanted to make sure that it was my chair. I want to bring in Troy Albert, who is the principal of the junior high school. The kids were just dismissed, weren't they, before this tornado? We dismissed 10 minutes earlier than normal. Got the kids on the buses, they got the kids in the cars home. And then we. Our principal, uh, Troy Albert, and Dr. Glenn Riggs made decisions for Henryville schools that saved several kids' lives. The thinking was, you know, we're a lot safer spread out than we are all together. And I don't think we would have gotten all the children into a safe place before it got hit. And there's no question it would have been tragic. There were places in that building that were literally just gone. They did the right thing, sending them on the bus. I tell you that. That was the move to make. Wayne had actually... So within the city limits of Henry Riddle, Lenora's husband, Wayne, was the only fatality. Protected Lenora. They went into a central closet in the house. And, uh... He held her, and that was what saved her life. Well, when it's your time, it's your time. And uh, it was his time, and not mine, for some reason. 
I just yep. hope everybody remembers to hold on to life, to hold on to each other. Show that you love. Okay. So this was an EF5 tornado. It was on the ground 49 minutes and carved a 47 mile path into the neighboring state of Kentucky. Uh, super loud. I'm not going to just do this. Uh, the storm caused $100 million of damage and claimed 11 lives. Once something of that magnitude happens, the question is, where do you start? How do you even begin? And thankfully, yeah. there were a number of volunteers and organizations and relief groups that knew where to begin. There was just support from everywhere. I mean, for weeks. You know, if you needed something, it was there. It was just overwhelming. It was amazing to see all the people that showed up that just cared. They just wanted to help in any way that they possibly could. And without them, we wouldn't have been back on our feet. The rebuilding process just was somewhat miraculous in terms of what was done with the school. It was impressive to see the rubble of the high school behind you one day and later it being completely rebuilt. It looks, looks exactly amazing. like it did before the tornado. You know, if there's any good that comes out of a disaster like that, it does give a town like Henryville a chance to start over. There's new buses, there's new homes, businesses that are sprouting up there. They accepted the hand that was dealt to them and they came together as a community and moved on as best as they can. Hornet Pride became kind of the theme because it was up on the sign outside the school and it made us all stronger just knowing it was there. The entire community grew from this experience. We all knew that no matter what, we were there for each other and we're all proud of our town. We all love our town. Okay. I really do enjoy watching these, even though it's uh, it's kind of hard to, to actually watch these. You, you know what I mean? Uh, but I do enjoy this. And uh, even though this is not probably never going to happen to Sweden, I still want to uh, learn what's going on in the rest of the world and be grateful that this doesn't happen in Sweden. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. If you want to support me, click join to become a member or check out the Patreon link in the comment section. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ricky. You stay safe.